In chapter 15, there are a few illustrations or diagrams that are helpful. I've included a few in the PowerPoint as well. Let's start with slide 4 for chapter 15 in the PowerPoint. If you look at the diagram, it shows how the transfer of an assignment works. Pay attention to the obligee and the obligor and the assignee who is also receiving. Also, please go to delegation found on slide 6 and you'll find a similar diagram but the arrows point differently. As a device to help retain this information, think D for delegation and D for duty. You delegate a duty and you assign a right. If you have a right, you can then give it away or assign it away. If you have a duty, then you delegate that duty. These diagrams are found in your textbook, but without the triangles. However, the difficult problem is how to determine which matters that cannot be assigned, matters that cannot be delegated. The two lists are very similar. For example, and if a contract is personal in nature, it is nearly impossible to assign it or delegate it. An example would be, if I'm an entertainer and I have a contract to perform at your party, you can't just assign my performance to another venue. Think of another way. Uh, if I'm a famous chef, I have a television show, lots of books, and you decide, well, I'll assign his contract to cook at my restaurant over to McDonald's. You can be a McDonald's chef for a while, you tell me. It's not necessarily assignable because the contract is indeed personal in nature. A delegation of duties, too, has the same result. I cannot delegate my work as a chef to another chef. So I want to start a story that we can use for several applications and we'll return to these facts actually in another chapter. Let's consider that our firm plans to build a large office style building. Indeed, we're going to lease office space and I hire you to be the office manager once the structure is up. In the meantime, I hire you to assist with the building or construction contracts. And again, we'll come back to this hypothetical scenario in the future. Let's jump forward and say the building is finished. Your obligations as a manager is also to work with the regular contractors, such as the janitorial service companies. On the night before the crew shows up to clean, you'll receive, you receive a call informing you that the regular janitor cannot make it. However, the company has no other employee to work, so it asks that another janitorial company clean for that period while the regular is out, and you don't know that other company. So at this point, your question is, may the janitorial company that you hired delegate its duty to another company to fulfill its contract terms? Can your janitorial company delegate its duty to someone else that you don't know? So review please slide 7's discussion of a special trust and personal skills. And let's go through each one and analyze. Let's start with number two. Is this a personal skill? Is this something that only the janitorial company you hired can do, that is cleaning? Are there trade secrets involved? Is there a special skill or talent? No, cleaning a restroom is the same no matter who cleans it. Number three, will the performance materially vary? Not likely in terms of just cleaning. How about number four? Well, let's say that you don't have a contract that specifically prohibits this type of behavior, which, on a side note, I would think you'd want to rethink that one. Add contractual clauses that do limit both assignments and delegations. If you don't, you'll be in this exact situation. Well, number one is when a special trust has been placed. Let's put that on hold, because many will say, well, it's fine. Let the other company come in. It's nothing special. That company can clean just as well as our janitor. So what's your answer? Is the delegation proper? I'll give you my answer after we discuss another hypothetical scenario. 
And in this second scenario, let's say that rather than a janitorial company, it's your security guard company. And so you have a security guard company that comes in, you vetted them, and for some reason the company's chief calls you up on the night before and says to you, the office manager, we can't come in. We have overbooked and I have no other employees to work. However, we can delegate our contractual obligations to another separate company. Well, this scenario is nearly the same as the first one, the one with the janitors. And both another entity that you do not know is in your building. With the security guard problem, though, a stranger is coming in at night with keys to everything. Would you want that delegation? Again, there's no special talent, no varying degree of performance, and let's say your contract does not prohibit the delegation. But maybe in the second scenario, you might say, in this case, with the attempt to delegate the security work, that the delegation breaches a special trust. The delegation does not work, as we don't know the second company. Is this your answer? If it is, I would agree with you. This delegation fails because there is a special trust that you provided with your security company who is now trying to delegate away its duty. Now let's return to the first scenario and discuss that one. 